If you've been noticing the Gospels that we've been listening to the past seven, eight, nine weeks, you will know we have been spending a long time in John's Gospel. But last week, for some reason, we switched over to Mark, where things happen in a very fast clip. The word immediately is used over 50 times as Mark has Jesus racing to Jerusalem to the cross to his death and his glorious resurrection. But along the way, Jesus gets a little tired. So he decides to go take a detour away from his home base and go out a little bit where people won't know it. Have you ever been to a place where people would know who you were and you just wish that they didn't know who you were? Yeah, what Jesus is going through right now. He's going to get away from the paparazzi. He's going to get away from the crowd. There's literally, he got the boat <laughs> and sailed across the crowd, ran around the lake to come find him. That's how insistent this crowd of people has been for Jesus. So he decides to go away to another place. Now, Mark's gospel, this does not strike us where he goes and what happens. It does not strike us as particularly weird or strange. He's going to another place, right? But if you were a Jew in Jesus' day, to go into Gentile territory would have been a scandal. You would have had to come back and go through ritual cleaning to become cleansed, to be allowed back into town. A number of these things that Jesus are about to happen right now in Jesus' gospel are ridiculous. And his hearers would be like, shut your mouth. He did it. And they'd be like, yes, he did. What? He goes to this other foreign place, right? He gets approached by a woman who is alone, who speaks to him, an unmarried Jewish man, about a daughter who has a demon, and he talks to her. What? But now he doesn't talk to her, he cures her daughter. If that were bad enough, he goes farther out, and the mother is in an unclean place. And he goes, he talks to somebody who's ritualistic. If you couldn't speak, and if in death it was assumed that your parents had done a lot of sin, and that sin got all transferred down to you, you were unclean. No one could talk to you. You couldn't be allowed inside your house, inside the city walls. You couldn't come and worship God. Jesus talked to that guy. And he put his hands in his ears and spit on his fingers and put his fingers in the tongue. You Jesus is not good. <laughs> and he cured him. It 
the opposite of this. Or worse, this. You're not small. Being open means to be expansive and broken open. It means being vulnerable to all. It means you can also be receptive to all. Last week, someone came to talk to me about something that she heard about. And it was, uh, it was good. I tried it a couple of times. Yeah, you know, people that really don't like having conversations with at all. Or sometimes they're in situations, real hard situations. You want to kind of do this, right? Try doing this instead, because it worked. I said, hey, take, take your hands, put them on your knees, put them open like this. And try having that dialogue with someone and be angry with them like this. It is so hard to do. You can't. Your hands aren't like this. They're like this. They're open. Jesus says, be open. And immediately, man heard and could see. Think about that. He could hear and he could speak. He had not been able to do so, and he could hear and he could speak. He was back in the community. The things that had afflicted him were gone. Jesus restored him to the fullest of life. And what does he do? He won't shut up about it. He says, don't say that.
help them to see, to hear, to believe, to know that love, that care, that compassion, that gift that you can give them in that moment. And don't worry about what's going to happen. You're going to be like this, pretty vulnerable and pretty scary. But don't worry. You'll say the right thing. You'll do the right thing. Let God take care of the rest of that. Our job is to be that open, welcome, broken open for the world to invite all to receive God's love. When we do that, we reflect, we reflect God's love to everyone. It's kind of our job. Join me in doing that to find one person and help become 